I never heard no one even mention anything bad about him other than rappers giving him praise in over 300 to 600 rappers. Y'all can get the out of here. I made this channel to speak my mind and that's what I'm going to do. Oh man, you are my hero, brother. It's called the Poor Man's Podcast. <laughs> Shout out to this brother, man. This video right here is going to be hilarious. I already know and more than likely we're going to have to take, we're going to have to bleep some things out of this video. I already know because I'm um, this is um, Charleston White. Y'all already know that Charleston White has his, has a way with words. And in this video, he is roasting liberals <laughs> and he's defending Trump. I want to see this, man. Why you wore that Trump hat in here? Oh, Tell me about this Trump I'm, hat. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a die hard Trump supporter. Uh, in my household, uh, you got Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. you got Jesus, and you got Donald Trump. Now, you heard the first question he asked him is, why did you wear that Trump hat up in here? <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Not in that particular order, but yeah, you got yeah, Martin Luther King, Jesus, and Donald Trump. Why you got Donald Trump? Now, you uh, know, well, I'm a straight Democrat, but I, I'm for the best person. Oh, uh, yes, but sir. But now, why you got Donald Trump? Uh, because I paid attention in school uh, when I was a kid, and so I know I know the I know the true history of, of both the Republican uh, and Democratic Party. Uh, I know that they really didn't switch during during the Nixon Southern strategy. That one became more clever than the other in dealing with black people. We the Democrats. We got away. We were the Republicans' friends. We were their friends, but we were the Democrats. Uh, when you look at the the the, the, the it's unfortunate who is interviewing him don't already have this information. Um, older, astute gentleman seems professional and clearly he he said i'm a democrat you know i rep the democrats but he don't have this information he don't have this information because he don't want to have this information because it make him look bad the origins of the ku klux klan uh it originated out of the Demo democratic party the ku klux klan it did every civil rights legislation that ever has been passed in this country was authored written uh sponsored and voted on 100 percent by republicans and not democrats every civil rights legislation well, what, what, what you gonna do so let me let me finish Man, Trump. Right. So as a so as a kid, I remember being six, seven years old uh, and, and seeing Donald Trump re receiving a, a, an award with with, with, with Muhammad Ali, uh, Rosa Parks mm. uh, from the NAACP. Uh, not only that, uh, he in, engaged and interacted in, in our culture from the 80s throughout the 90s and even the 2000s from rappers to Michael Jackson. Uh, so when we looked out into our culture, his face appeared many, many times. Uh, so for me to grow up now and, and then hear the media, because before the media started saying he was racist, I never heard a black leader say it. I never wow. heard my grandmother say it. I never heard no one even mention anything bad about him other than rappers giving him praise in over 300 to 600 raps. Wow. So for the media to say, oh, he's racist, I knew they were playing con on him. And I can remember when America, I can remember when black children could play outside all day long uh, and you didn't hear about kids being you didn't hear about drive by sh and i'm gonna take it a step further we need to start snitching i can't wait, <laughs> wait to tell on a <laughs> oh, he... bro where you come from talking about we need to start snitching he, he charleston white really believes in uh snitching on people too but uh um, this is the gentleman who hosts the poor man's um, podcast if i chose a citizen life and i'm an everyday going to work ass person and you over here holding my grandmother up and point i gotta get you out of here because i don't want to go to jail for you, and I'm not gonna let you run rampant in my community. Get his black ass out of here. What? I get paid to snitch now. It's really classified. I can't even really talk about this shit, my nigga. Oh. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna say this too. Some of these well-to-do black men need to start carrying arms and policing their own community so that some of these kids can go to school and get an education without having to carry a gun. And I'm gonna scream this till my lungs burst. Y'all can unfollow. Y'all can dislike. Y'all can get the out of here i made this channel to speak my mind and that's what i'm gonna do oh man you are my hero brother you are my hero bro i like him i like you man I like you. He said, I made this channel to speak my mind, and that's what the hell I'm going to do. Desegregation was one of the worst things that ever happened to black people because as soon as they got the chance, they took the money out of their own neighborhoods and ran to the white establishments that they thought was better than the establishments that their own families built. And another thing it did is it took the bourgeoisie black people and moved them out of the neighborhood. So those smart guys that look like us that should have been in the neighborhood being a good influence, they left because it turns out if you a dentist and you on your way to work, you don't want to have to worry about being shot. It turns out if you want to have a 
nice truck in your driveway, you don't want to have to worry about being robbed, so you can't even blame them. About six months ago, I took my wife to a brunch place to chill out, listen to good music, eat some good food around a bunch of people that look like me. An hour and a half later, I was kicking the door open and pulling my wife to the ground because we ended up in the middle of a fight and i thought to myself in what other community does a person who makes the amount of money i make go to an establishment and have to worry about getting sh at around people that look like them and no other community is that a concern so i facts 1000 percent, and it's unfortunate too because then you don't go outside as much you don't go outside nearly as much okay let me just speak for my dad on self i don't go outside nearly as much because i know that by me simply going to have good time um around people that look like me and are they know me and all those things come from the same neighborhoods i'm from that the likelihood of something happening is extremely high so it's like you got some decisions to make especially if you're pulling up in something that looks nice i do understand that those bourgeoisie black people do have an obligation to their communities but at what point as a man am i going to prioritize the safety of my own family everybody want to play the blame game but with 79 percent of black babies being born out of wedlock that's something we're deciding to do to ourselves and how are you going to compete how is a single Bruh. mother household going to compete with an asian american household that has two incomes and unfortunately america is a capitalistic society it's pay to play if your economics ain't right you will not be taken serious how are you going to raise good leaders to represent your community on the national stage if you don't have families the civil rights movement was backed by family economics you don't get a martin luther king you don't get a malcolm x you don't get a black panther party without black families that are able to finance them so maybe instead of telling our kids fuck the police you inspire some of those kids to become police officers so they can police their own communities facts 1000 percent and plus i just now came across a video where it was like 13 young men 13 young black men who was jumping another black dude Dude, um, this black dude was just he was a social worker he was a social worker that was leaving their school and they decided to jump this dude man they they decided to jump him and the guy that was recording it was a grown man another grown black man and instead of him stopping the recording to stop this social worker from being um being accosted and beat up he decided to tell them boys yo he was laughing he was laughing the entire time y'all better hurry up and go away man y'all need to hurry up and run y'all need to hurry up and run because they're gonna call the cops they're gonna call the police man y'all need to get away so that they can live to jump somebody another day they want to live they want to be able to be free so that they can be able to whoop on somebody another day and this man who was supposed to be someone that they can look up to instead of him putting that phone down and stop recording and get in front of them like yo stop jumping this man he didn't want to put himself in harm's way so he played it off as their friend and told them boys to oh man go ahead and hurry up and go away hurry up and run hurry up and run so you won't get arrested that's not the type of people that you need in your community for real they are encouraging this and it happened over and over and over and over again but you can't do that if you're pushing out all the black bourgeoisie people because it's unsafe in the neighborhoods and you can't make the neighborhood safe with a bunch of single mothers it just ain't gonna happen the black community got a lot of work to do before we can start blaming other communities on our problem Back. because how i see it at this point we are our biggest problem hey, you gotta say what's up. Hey, hey. I've been accused of having sold out and I find this actually quite interesting because I've actually given this a great deal of thought. Black marriage rates were significantly higher before the civil rights movement compared to after. Children were more likely to grow up in a two-parent household before the civil rights movement as opposed to after. Black men were more entrepreneurial and more self-reliant before the civil rights movement as opposed to after. And so for me, when I look at my own life and I look at my own values, they are more indicative of the average Southern Black man prior to the civil rights movement. And so I haven't sold out. I've kept in continuation with my father, with my great-grandfathers and my great-great-grandfathers. I'm a continuation of that. I've maintained that culture. If anyone has sold out, it's you all. It's That's black right. culture. Go ahead, bruh. Facts, 1000%. Because it was at a time when our great great grandparents or great grandparents was trying to make moves to put us in position so that we can thrive, so that their generations after them, generations after them, that they produced, that they created, 
would be okay because they cared about stuff like that. So yes, my grandparents were married. Robert and Murray, uh, Murray Hall, they were married and they had like 13 kids. And those kids, some of them got it and some of them didn't. Some of them de um, decided to move away and start families and get married and do things the right way, have careers. And some of them decided, I'm going to have a whole family full of criminals and I'm going to help them out. And I'm going to show them how to commit crimes the right way. And we're going to stay in these neighborhoods neighborhoods because we're going to run these neighborhoods and from that a great and, and rest in peace to my family look it's not a good thing to say because this is what happens it's, it's just this is a part of the cycle those parents who decided those my aunts and uncles who decided to live that way and say i'm just going to allow my kids to run and run rapid and do whatever the hell they want to do around these streets um i mean i'm even going to help them matter of fact i might even be a customer of theirs when they're selling I might buy some of it from them. Stop it. Get some help. Um, some of their kids died way earlier than they were supposed to. Way sooner. Yeah. By being in the game, so to speak. But the ones who got out of there, got married, and made sure that they want to continue that success that their grandparents and great-grandparents started, they were considered the black sheep of the family or the sellouts of the family. Not even recognizing that, nah, the people that went astray and decided to F up their great-great-grandparents' legacy, they were the sellouts. Black culture supports this. They support this selling out. I got a video, I got a video I'm going to show y'all later of a young football team it look like they're probably like a, a 11 u 11 under football team and i want y'all to listen to what they were saying to get ready for their game extremely disrespectful and the parents that were standing around they were just kikiing and laughing and thinking it was so funny not realizing that they are adding to this destructive culture that we consider um the greatest of us to be a part of and it's bs man y'all sold out the entrepreneurial spirit the family unit y'all sold out of that in pursuit of what the entertainment industry's version of what black culture is if voting is any kind of measure of yeah. where a person stands in terms of how they identify the fact that 90 plus percent of black folks vote for democrats the party that basically reinforces everything the entertainment industry says black culture is if anyone has sold out it's those who insist upon the modern entertainment culture that you now call black culture i'm not the one who sold out sir you are my thoughts exactly everything that, that made black that. american culture amazing got flipped upside down it's to the point where if you're an articulate black man that. other black people will tell you you ain't black do you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or trump and you, you ain't, ain't black. black everybody wants diversity uh, in the black community except for diversity of thoughts and opinions and the thing is our grandmothers and grandfathers taught us better than that before you went into that store your grandma told you pull up your pants don't embarrass me in front of these white people because she understood that we are a part of a minority group and culture so in order to represent yourself in the majority you have to be able to assimilate into that culture how you gonna be able to get the job if you walk in there with your pants sagging talking about hey my say my woody woody woo other black people might be able to understand you but they talk yourself out of a situation with the police or represent yourself in front of a judge if you can hardly speak the language they gonna think you did it to be honest the black community has a habit of pushing out well-to-do especially well-to-do conservative black men they call them lames they call them boring and they make fun of them until they become successful from their principles and then they go why you ain't helping out the community y'all niggas shame me because i wanted to read a book instead of throwing a football and now that i reap the benefits you expect me to help you what i'm basically trying to say is presentation is everything especially if you are part of a minority group and shaming the people who want to be better Better is a recipe for disaster let me know in the comments below wow this dude is on point man again it's called poor man's um, podcast this dude is nice and i'm surprised that he's able to thrive the way that he is on his channel because we already know how sensitive it is on these platforms uh, with censorship it's crazy so y'all let me know whatever y'all want me to know about this in the comments all right because it's imperative that we get this type of these type of videos out there all right because things are definitely flipped on their head right now and the people who are doing what they're supposed to do raising families making sure that all their children are educated and respectful of adults and respectful of other people overall whether they're teenagers kids or whatever those people need to be celebrated more than the people who are just making things worse constantly diminishing our fabric um, our culture and generations of work generations and generations and generations of work blood sweat and tears literally that our four fathers our grandparents and great-grandparents have put in so sometimes we think that we need to focus on the 
the our anger and what we lack but that lack focusing on lack is the exact same reason why adam and eve were in the effed up predicament that they were in because they had the whole world at their hands but satan encouraged them to focus on the one thing that they didn't have that one tree that they weren't supposed to eat you're going to focus on that not everything that you have not the 99.9 percent .9 of your blessings you're going to focus on that point one percent that you don't have and and we're just going to um we're going to make you out to be a victim from that and you're going to do something that you were instructed not to do and completely mess up mankind because of it that's where we are right now and it's it's ridiculous